So maybe along the way, we still have more members joining. Uh, we'll just go with the flow and, uh, you know, uh, we'll also share the recording with everybody in our community. So uh, first of all, very welcome to Guan Quan, uh, also known as GQ, who is the head of projects from Invade. Uh, if the name is unfamiliar to you, you probably have heard a lot of, uh, you know, the other events they have been organizing, um, you know, quite well known in the creative community, such as uh, the Makers Market. I believe some of you might have uh, joined their activities before. And uh, I think there's another flea market. In fact, uh, I think they've been working with one of our partners uh, station. Uh, where we have organized our Christmas art market. Uh, they have also been doing the flea markets in partnership with Station. Uh, and of course, Artbox Singapore is one of the, you know, signature projects they have been uh, organizing. And I think in the past years, you, you know, they have been attracting a lot of media exposure and also a lot of buzz. So I think it's really a very good opportunity for us to, you know, get to know more about Artbox uh, from GQ. So without further ado, I will just um, pass it to him. And today will be just a very casual sharing. Uh, he will introduce to us about Artbox. And of course, for those who are interested in participating, uh, we will also share with you, uh, you know, some of the things that you need to take note of or you need to consider before signing up. And also, uh, you know, for him to share with you some tips and tricks, right? What's How do you better up or how do you maximize your workshop signups? What kind of workshop is suitable for this occasion and so on? Uh, so GQ, can I pass to you now? Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, okay. So the very first thing, uh, thank you for um, you know, having us. Uh, especially at least like you know, organizing um this entire session so that at least you know I have the opportunity to share a bit more of uh what's the twenty twenty four plan um for for our company, right? And of course, um, the very mega festival that we'll be doing in um in, in about three weeks time. <clears throat> so. Allow me to quickly uh, do a brief introduction of my company as well. Lah, right? So basically, we are from Invade, right? So as uh, what Alice has shared, right? Basically, we, we are like a creative agents, uh, experiential agency. Uh, you know, we host uh, various different IPs, um, you know, co-host um, different IPs with other um, agencies, uh, government agencies, or even entities um, that we actually create uh, different events to create. Uh, or what we're trying to achieve is basically like to create a experience, right? A new, fresh, uh, with, like creative experience for all our clients, right? And of course, the visitors who are coming. So, um, yeah, so so basically, uh, Mega Festival, like Artbox itself, um, this is something that we do on an annual basis. And of course, we do also have, um, you know, other kind of uh, plans that we have um, this coming year. So, yeah, just let me quickly share my screen um, on what's coming up in Artbox itself. So sorry, I just keep this. I try to keep this session short. You know, like you know, I I I really like, appreciate you. You guys actually take up about you know thirty to thirty minutes, one hour of your lunch time, um, just to actually join me for this session. So um, yeah, feel free to ask me anything along the way if you have any questions. Okay, so. Yes, so this year itself, uh, we are actually doing uh, Artbox Avenue, right? Um, so um, some of you might heard about Artbox itself, right? Um, so this is where I want to do a quick introduction of what Artbox is about, right? So um, Artbox is actually a, a concept that we actually brought over from Thailand, right, in 2017, where we actually turned this into a creative uh, container market, right? Um, and the, for the first three years between 2017 all the way to 2019, this is where we actually held it at around the MBS area. And also, um, you know, on 2019, we actually shifted over to the West area where it's located at Kranji, which is the third club area. Right. So um, if you see based on the statistics, right, like uh, this is a public event, right? So basically we managed to, you know, um gather about half a million of visitors over across the seven or six to seven days, right? Um, to join us in Unbox itself, where they actually get to experience different kind of local and regional um, you know, like uh, food, retail, or even like uh, creative installations and experiences in Unbox itself. So uh this itself, like we actually really got a lot of media coverage, news coverage, like um, you know, people really love about what we do, right? Like people start to get try to start to find out like, hey, you know what is invade about and what Unbox is generally about and uh, this is where you know visitors on a yearly basis they are expecting us to return right like um 
bigger and better, right? Uh, of course, more fun, more experiential. So every year we will actually try to create a concept, like I will say the uh, different edition, right? To actually um continue to have that continuity, right? Like I think because if you continue to do something that is very similar, um, then that's where people will start to like, hey, you know, like it's it is so repeated, right? People don't really enjoy coming in anymore. So which is why we always make make it a thing, right? We make it a habit that, you know, every year we definitely need to come up with a new edition and of course to introduce new kind of like um experiential uh, program, right? It unbox itself. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay, so yes. So for this year, as you know, like pandemic, right? Like 2020 onwards, we have to actually um stop all our events, right? Um, due to the the circuit breakers and of course uh the safety distancing and stuff like that, right? So we have to put all our events on hold. Uh, unfortunately, that was a kind of kind of like a downfall for us, lah, right? Because we are from the events background. So generally, for the two to three years, it was a, a bit tough, right? A bit challenging for us. But the team managed to pull through, and we managed to bring a box um back in twenty twenty three, right? And this time round, there are three main factors that is very very different, right? Um, I would say that what is so different between the first uh twenty twenty three, like which is last year. Uh, versus against the, the first three years that we did, right? So firstly, uh, we actually uh, did it indoor, right? So this is the main focus that, you know, um, the media have been covered, covering, right? Like we actually uh, made it like a all day night festival where, you know, um, users or visitors, they are there when they are there, they don't have to worry about, you know, rain or they don't have to worry about the sunny weather, right? Um, all they need to be worried about is like, eh, how cold is the aircon, right? So that that that's that's where we actually turn um this entire edition or we brought the entire edition into the convention hall, and um it will it is about hundred thousand square feet space, right? Where we have you know uh, two to three hundred stores um that are popping up there along with us. So um that was one of one uh, main key highlight. The second one is actually we co-organized with Escape this year. Oh, sorry, last year. Yeah, so uh, so what happened is basically uh, SGAG wanted to actually create, you know, like they always bring like a uh, comedy into um, people's life, right? They always, you know, come up with funny memes, uh, funny content, right? To actually make people laugh, right? So they were saying like, you know, they want to do something that is more physical, right? And what did they, uh, what can they come up with? So this is where we actually, you know, uh, brainstorm with them, that we actually co-organize where we actually do, or rather they actually came up with challenges, okay? Which later I will share a bit more about what type of challenges they did okay for 2023 and what kind of challenges they will be doing in 2024 okay so um generally this is where they also help, help to actually generate an x amount of media value right because given that they are under the industry so okay, the last but not least we actually um have this um under a ticketing system right where we actually our box became ticketed right um because we see the value in it we want to actually really very focus on people who really love about us as, as well right and of course you know with the comfortable environment that we are building uh, this is where we managed to actually gather 60,000 paid visitors across the two weekends for 2023 when it when it first came back right so this is where a lot of people will say like wow okay our box is back you know i want to check it out um and this time around they they they, they came back like you know in the indoor setting and this is um what people really love about lah, right and with that itself of course we manage to actually um or rather they actually have a like you know longer spending dwelling time um at our box itself because generally they pay a nominal fee there are so many activities that they can do right so for instance like you know um live music uh they do have like um food and retail that they can shop they also have like experiential workshops that they can do uh and of, of course like you know some games that we will play along the way such as like treasure hunts and things like that so this is where usually we work with our partners uh to come up with um very creative and interesting programs right for them so with that being said, of course, um, you know, like with the longer the dwelling time it is, right, to help the partners, of course, um, that's where we also see that, you know, the visitors actually manage to spend more, right, because they get to, uh, um, you know, like, like they really want to actually try out everything, right, because you already paid a ticket in, then, you know, why not I from you know, stay from lunch all the way to dinner, where I can get to interact with so many different stores. So, um, we then now of course, um, in terms of the media value, this is where we actually work with you know SPH, we work with Time Out, we work with uh, TSL, and all in all, like we work with different KOLs and stuff. And this is where we generated about a fourteen million worth of uh, media value in our box. And uh, we are, and I think uh, something that is like uh, very uh, I would say like very comforting for the for the team is where uh, we are actually recognized as one of the best event in the marketing event awards so i think this is something like a reward to the team i say that you know the effort have been put through right 
sorry. Okay, yeah. So so yeah. So these are some of the headliners, like I shared, right? You know, Time Out, uh, Straits Time, and some of the you know um different different uh media publications company, right? Like uh media mainstream media, they have been covering. So even for this year itself, um, that's one shocking factor for us, lah. Right? Is generally. Uh, we already before even our press release was out, right? We already got got organic media that are coming to us, or even like uh, started to post about us, like say, hey, you know, our boss will be coming back, and this time out it was also be held in um expo itself, right? So uh, you know, like if you if you have seen like maybe like let's say ebook um. CNA lifestyle, all these uh, medias they have really been acti actively like promoting for us really. So this is uh this is something that we are proud of, right? You know, in a, in a sense like we already created a legacy in the local scene, right? Being the top ten, you know, Google event and things like that, like in in the That's local so um. Sorry. Oh, is that a question? <laughs> oh okay. yeah. Some of the artists forgot to mute. Um, we asked. Let everyone ask your questions later. So ah uh, uh, okay, okay okay sorry yeah so I'll just continue yeah so so this is this is where we have like you know active uh medias who are already working with us in terms of like sharing about our box itself. So of course this year itself, what is the edition right? Because last year we have this uh edition where we call it vision right. So be playing a lot with what you see right. This time round is basically what we want to create in terms of building an infra, building a street kind of style, like just treat it like a New York City in a uh, convention hall, right? So basically there will be a lot of street vibes, there will be a lot of artists, a lot of like creative art play, right? Because a box with the name art, right? It actually explains a lot, right? Basically it's like where you come in, you know, like splatter your creativity, splatter your uh, innovative ideas in this space, safe space. So this is where we want to have that platform for all, um, you know, the creatives, the business owners, or uh, whichever like partners that are joining us. So um, this year, um, in terms of the media and VIP day, it will be on 25th January, which is on a Thursday. So this is where we will actually invite about 1,000 to 2,000, um, you know, like KOLs, uh, VIP guests and stuff to actually come and have a sneak preview, okay, of what Artbox is about, right? Like what they, um, are they expecting this year, right? So uh, we already see a growing number. Like, people are like, you know, like really, hey, well, I want to like do a sneak preview. I want to understand. I want to check out the box itself. Like what what, what have you have in store for this year itself, right? So this is where, likewise, later on, I'll share a bit more about uh, what are the kind of programs like um, that will be happening in our box. And of course, um, before we even open the public, that is where, uh, you know, like the main three medias, the medias will actually be coming down to actually cover uh, certain coverage, like share a bit, like what they experience in our box itself. So um, after that, which is 26 to 28, and of course, this uh, second to fourth Feb, right? Uh, this is where we will open up to uh, the public, right? Uh, between 12 to 11 p.m. And 10 p.m. will be the last entry. So... Um, this is across like Friday to Sunday, across the weekends, lah, right? And uh, this time it will be actually held in Singapore Expo Hall 2, which is um nearer to the Max Asia area. Okay. And um likewise, because we have already proven that you know last year we actually managed to get 60k paid visitors, and this is why we actually have the more confident, right? Given that all the medias are already starting to cover in, and all you know, like all the FMB, all the retail players, they are actively, you know, like uh, joining us and promoting about this event, we are actually more confident in bringing more people. So, which is why we are actually expecting between 60 to 100K or can, it could be even further, right? Um, paid visitors that will be joining us. So, in terms of the target audience, definitely um, is usually between 18 to 35, right? Now, of course, uh, for here, we put 18 to 35 because it's more catered towards the workshop, right? Like, for instance, um, usually couples or usually, um, I would say, uh, the like maybe individuals, right? Depending on the type of workshops, they actually do enjoy our workshop components um last year, right? Um where really that I share a bit more um uh, what we did last year. So um yeah, so the main three pillars that you know uh what you can find in our box, right? Generally is the first um uh, art and play. And of course then we go to live staging where there will be music performances and some challenges. And of course, the food and retail, right? Like everyone needs food and retail. Like this is what it made a mega festival, like a lifestyle festival. So um, in terms of art and play, yeah. So you were expecting that, you know, there will be some like uh, mural artists coming in to do certain paintings. There will be some roving performances. And of course, uh, this year, what we want to do um, slightly different is also like we want to give more free play credits to the visitors. We want to incentivize them. 
right? Which is why that's, that's why we have that more like confidence in bringing more people, right? So we are actually setting up two karaoke booths, right? Where you can sing all day, right? So it's a free play where you, as long as you purchase a ticket, you get a chance to sing about one to two songs uh, along with your friends, right? So this is where we are actually working with Phil Hing to actually bring in the system, to deck up the container, you know, to make the entire, to spruce up the entire uh, view, right? Of course, you can do uh, mini competitions between you and your friends, right? Like to see who sang, who sang the best, who sang better. So there are certain kind of programs we are still exploring with them in terms of whether are we coming out with certain kind of competitions, but these are uh, currently all in talks, lah. Okay, but uh, yes, that, that would be one uh, key component that we have um, in terms of having a free, kar free kar kar karaoke sessions with your friends. Then, of course, we also do have like a game area. We call it, we call it the GameStop Arena, la, right? So this is where you can actually get a chance to play like a free Switch game or even like a VR experience that you can, um, as long as you, you, you paid for the nominal fee. Right, so the then this is where it comes to all the creative workshops, right? So we have like six different uh booths, right? I would say workshops, right? That we are looking at, you know, to have different kind of curate uh curated programs, right? Between these workshops, so that you know uh people can actually enjoy different things. But of course, I can also share my opinions, share my observations based on last year. Like, what is the best uh outcome that you could get? Like, in the sense, like uh, what kind of programming structure might be more helpful, right, in terms of running the program, right? So uh, in terms of the arcade, um, yes, we also do a work with arcade, arcade player, um, where um, they basically they will bring in their machines and we will have like a daily challenge where um, visitors can actually get a chance to win a prize, okay? So these are some of the, uh, you know, like art and play element that you will be able to experience in our box. And of course, the live staging, you know, what's, some, what's our box without live music, right? Like everyone loves to, you know, chill, eat, right? And also enjoy music at the same time. So uh, with the stage itself, we are trying to make it like a concert, like, you know, because of the, 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 the street vibes that we are trying to build, lah, right? So this is where we will have loger, uh, lo loger, sorry, local and regional artists uh, coming on board, right? Um, to actually perform. Right, so um, you we, we may be expecting some dance competition, you know, given that strips uh the, the kind of like um like uh program, right, and of course you know certain brands that are taking over the stage itself. So uh, there will be some games played like trivia questions, Simon says, and things like that. Uh, with our MC, so that it makes things more interesting, right? So imagine like you know paying six to seven dollars, or sorry, seven to eight dollars for the ticketing, right? Uh, you can actually get to free uh experience all these free element really. And of course, last but not least, the food and retail, right? Where um, you know, we have like um Korean companies joining us, we have like um, you know, Malaysians, uh, we have the Thailand companies who are joining us, you know, like uh to give like certain unit offerings, right? So this is something that probably you, you couldn't get in Singapore as well, right? So this is why we want to retain that kind of flavor, right? Also to at the same time support the local. So uh, usually 90% are made of local, and then 10% is where we actually approach uh overseas um IP to actually join us in um our box itself. And um, this is just a quick summary, right? Like, what do you expect in um, our box itself? Like, you know, you have containers, you have the uh, experiences, and you also, of course, you have the food and the uh, shop kind of experiences. And here's the layout. Um, I'll just quickly run through, right? So um, those who have actually joined us for last year, uh, you know, if in terms of our layout itself, uh, basically, um, all our con our ticketing, right? Uh, basically, is all um set up in a vertical manner, right? But based on the last year observation, we learn to be better. Where we want this year to be something that is more um deliberate, where they before even they actually enter our box, you already get a sneak peek of certain things, right? Because back then when it's vertical, a lot of things are covered up because um generally we wanted to give them that kind of like uh I would say like mystery right like everything you see with your eyes once you enter a box but this time around i think it's more towards avenue right something that is more street that you want people to actually experience the entire flow so this is where we, we deliberately slide um or rather we slanted this entire ticketing system where there will be certain kind of like a building infra that will be built up right and uh usually there will be like the brand takeover or the sponsor takeovers lah, right so there will be like creative installations where um people can actually or rather sponsors they can actually engage with their customers or their visitors 
So uh, once they actually enter the space already, right? Uh, we the first thing that you will hit, right? Uh, in a visual is basically the hero structure. So this hero structure is very important, lah, right? This is where we we think that you know, like um, everyone will take photos there. Um, uh, people will be interacted, like say, hey, you know, tag, uh, snap, and you know, really start to tag your friend and ask them to come down. Already. So uh, this is where uh, it, it's like a new Times Square, right? That like we we do have like LED screens, we do have like you know, um sort of like a two to three meter stack container where people can actually see um you know or who are the sponsors what are the programmings there so these are uh, the installations that you'll be expecting here okay then so once you turn left right once you enter right this is what we call is as the activity zone okay so in this activity zone definitely you are expecting different different kind of programmings along like uh, the entire stretch right so the first thing of course you will be able to see is the um Tio Heng booth which is the ktv booth right so this is where you can actually start to register you know get your free singing sessions with your friends okay then that's where you can uh, enjoy that you know one to two songs uh, along with your friends or family lah right then this is this uh i would say 10 booths right is actually made up with our um switch and a vr experience so uh similarly this will be free to play for um the visitors who are coming okay and we also have this what we call yes open plaza so we will we will stack it up like um you know different palettes right um that, that's by this sponsor right where we will have this open plaza that is uh we we will have a chess community for the first week, lah, right? Um, it's called by uh, it's by Ali Wah Chess Club, right? When they will come in, they will host competitions. They will host like you know crash courses for people who who will be keen to learn. So a uh, mini workshops, lah, right? So it will be a quick crash course for everyone to understand about the chess community. And uh, for the last but not least, this is the workshop um area that uh we are looking at, you know, to bring partners on board to actually uh create different kind of uh unique experience for the users. Okay, or the visitors. And this is where we will have the dining zone, okay, along with our unbox stage. So this is where people can chill, eat, enjoy live music, or even play games to win prizes uh, with our MCs, with our performances that will be happening around this area. And um, all this blue uh, pocket space, or ignore the red box, uh, sorry, because this is very technical drawing. So these blue uh, boxes that you see here is a, uh, is all our FMB players, okay? So this FMB, uh, you know, like I shared, like, like there will be regional and local offerings. Um, So you will be able to see like there are familiar stores that you have been uh, seeing, right? Um, Especially for this zone, uh, what we call it as the uh, VIP area, right? Uh, Avenue Dining Zone. So this is where it will be slightly more exclusive towards uh, our VIP guests, our medias. So this is where we want to host them, right? Um, with bringing in more like also established brands, uh, well-known well brands, or even like um, brands that have been in the local scenes for uh, a period of time, right? And um, this green zone is where we have like all the retail brands. Um, like, similarly, like, you know, the, all the Koreans, uh, like, like Mini 21, maybe you might be familiar. Um, they are actually, uh, or will be popping up in this um, zone as well. Okay, then um here is the SGAC stage, right? So SGAC stage is basically where there will be certain kind of fun challenges um where they will interact with the visitors and of course visitors will stand to win uh stand a chance to win like whole hard cash, which I'll show you later. Uh what are the programmings? Okay. And last but not least, the arcade zone. So this is where um the arcade challenges will be held daily, right? So for instance, like a street basketball challenge, uh, for the first week, then you know you you may actually stand a chance to win a home and uh living style furniture, right? Um, as long as you get the top scorer in the leaderboard, right? So these are some of the challenges we really want to entice people to play. So yeah, so as as we speak, um, you know, SGAC stage is where this year, oh uh, sorry, uh, last year, okay, um, what they did was what they call it as the beam of pain, right? So this beam of pain is basically is a balancing beam that is installed with like an acupuncture tiles. So as you walk, you feel the pain, right? So that's why they call it the beam of pain, right? But this time round, they want to amp up. They want you to hop on it, right? So basically, the fastest winner, right, will be able to actually stand a chance to win $888 cash, Okay, this is across all three challenges as well. So meaning to say each challenge they will have um $880 cash tagged to it, right? And of course, the second challenge will be then this what we call it as the national Piak cockroach championship. So don't worry, um it's not a real cockroach, but basically you stand a chance to actually throw your slipper on as get filming, right? So this is the fun of it, right? People really I never mind, let's just throw. I mean, end of the day, what you're trying to get is basically 
get a chance to throw at, uh, you know, like one of the superstar, right? <laughs> so they also have like some creators that will be joining as well, lah, right? And of course, last but not least, the National Water Bottle Tornado Championship. So this is what, uh, for the locals, you probably will understand better, right? Because um, national, uh, basically this is where like, you know, um, in school canteens, usually when you drink half the bottle of drinks, then that's where you start to spin the bottle and see who you and your friend, like between each bottle, like who is the, who has the longest lasting tornado. So likewise, they will be sprucing up um, this entire challenge uh, by having a larger bottle for you to spin, right? So these are all the kind of creative, um, you know, fun elements that we want to introduce in our box, which as can help, I think it actually made it more fun, right? So, uh, so here are some of the examples. Uh, so this is this way, uh, this last year one, right? You see like, uh, I think this is my ito. Uh. Okay, so one of the creator, um, they actually uh, try to balance and work at the same time. So this challenge is not easy, uh, but of course it's free for everyone to try. Um, definitely, um, you know, like that, that will be, uh, I mean, the fastest winner last year was about, they took about three seconds, okay? For I think about 15 meter long. Uh. Yeah, three seconds. Um, where they uh, he's he's from the parkour community lah. So he won this eight hundred eighty eight dollars. Like uh, I mean, yeah. So as guess Xiaoming also like he on himself also do the challenge. Yeah. So um, this is the open plaza where uh, I shared that you know all the activities will be happening right. All the VR, all the switch, uh, workshops or even like the uh queuing containers. Uh, then of course uh, you know we have like the avenue poster where we will put up like you know some of the information from our sponsors. And this is the KDV container that we envision it to be, lah, right? Like everyone can be there to sync. And here are some of the switch booths or the VR booths. So it's something that is uh we are trying to create that is more cozy for the environment. And of course, um the workshop, right? Uh, of one kind, unique, you know, like this is where we want um, you know, with the workshop host, or we want to curate with the whole uh, the programming with the workshop host. Um, to potentially bring in very, very interesting uh, kind of workshops for uh, the visitors to try out. So um, here are some of the examples, lah, right? Or, or rather proposed uh, workshops that we did um, with some of the partners, right, previously. Um, usually for us is we do um, and encourage, right, um, to keep the workshops or workshops. Okay, why we call it workshops? Because usually it should be quicker. Right. A uh, workshop usually mainly it might be longer, right? Uh generally depending on the size, like probably one workshop host is to actually organize with like maybe one ratio, a ratio of one to ten, right? Or um, but workshop is right slightly more different. Um, because given that space um itself, um later I'll show you a bit like uh, in terms of the size of the space that is provided. Uh, but generally, um one workshop host usually can go up to one to five. Okay, depending on the space um layout as well, right? So um what we are usually encourage is you know keep it within 30 minutes or even lesser, that would be better, right? Because the idea of like you know visitors they are coming on board, right? Um they usually want to experience everything, right? So if we gonna have a workshop that's gonna be super long, say for instance an hour, um the chances the chances of them like you know signing up will be the tendency will be like slightly lesser, right? Because usually they want to quickly try out everything. Um, so that you know, like they can actually uh experience most of the stuff within uh the time frame, right? So, um, yeah. So 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 basically, this workshop itself. Um, then of course, in terms of the price point, usually for workshops, they are actually doing between ten to twenty dollars. And of course, if it's that there's something small for people to take home, that will be even better, right? Because I think this is where you also can um have that opportunity to actually build your brand, right? Where you have that kind of um brand awareness where people can take a piece of something from you um home for for them to share with their friends and family right so these are some of the examples that you know potentially uh is quick it's uh short and people are generally like what what they like because uh we 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 definitely try to try to see if we can in, um do it more inclined towards the street style but of course we are open in, to suggestions because end of the day uh, we will curate with the team and we will actually uh shortlist and we will let the, the participant uh sorry the, the applicants know that you know these are some of the potential uh workshops that will be happening in in in, in uh, our box itself. So um I I'll, I'll say that you know um if there's a possibility then uh try to create in 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 in, in more of the recommended uh kind of like program. So um of course um 
we for us is uh works work stops is slightly more different. Uh the, definitely there will be some like pricing structure like, that we will build up, lah, right? Because uh this is just a nominal fee that we will need um the, the workshop operators to support, right? Because we have like infra that we know build licensing, the manpower, uh the rental of the space and you know, all, all, all these like uh logistics operational, like even publicity material that we will be promoting. So um for usually f usually from my perspective is of course if you can take two weekends that would be better because generally even for the first weekend you can really uh look at you know doing uh it i mean you can actually share this with the media really because we have a media day on 25th which usually the media day is the more important day right then of course then uh then we will be open to public where you can then start to uh share or showcase your workshops to um the rest of them yep so this is how you will look like, okay? So uh, basically, it will be side, aligned side by side, right? Uh, of course, we do have like some of them that looks like a corner booth um, where you have like, uh, I would say you have like two sides that are open, open up, right? While the other one is uh, on the side, there will be uh, the, the, the next booth, right? So um, basically, like there will be tables and chairs provided. And of course, um, if you need more, then uh, we could, you can put up a request, but usually there will be uh, some cost that will be a applicable la, right okay so um generally this is uh, and then we also provide a 13m powerpoint so of course uh try not okay you can bring a uh, extension but try not to plug in too much power in case it might short trip yeah so these are just some of the uh items that we provide uh, uh for the workstop uh, operators and yeah so Thanks for your time. Yeah, um, just want to quickly find out, like you know, for you guys, um, what are some of the questions that you have, or do you have any? Great, thank you, GQ. Uh, I think while the artists before the artists ask the questions, because I know mm. there are some of them couldn't join this session, but they have mm. left questions with me, so I just ask on their behalf. Um, okay. so the artist, I think she's asking, can she exhibit or sell some of her? like crafted products at the booth, um, you mm. know, she's carrying out workshop activities. Is that allowed? Okay. Uh, we, we will try not to, but it can be explored, okay? Because uh, idea is um, this works not good, right? Um, mainly, we would just want activities to happen, right? And which is why we actually specifically crafted a, a, a workshop versus a retail. Right. Mm. Uh, so retail zone generally that's where all the selling will happen. But of course, um, this is something that you know, uh, we can explore as well. It's not say like oh, hundred percent we cannot do. Um, but I just want to understand what kind of products they are selling because it could be a package, right? Where you know you join us for this workshop, right? And if you want to take this thing home, you need to top up the cost. Yeah, it could be in that structure, right? So I will say that this is one possible way that we can explore. But it should not be. Uh, it should not be hundred percent selling la. <laughs> Basically, is there should be a work workstop activity. Got it. Got it. Um, mm. I, got a, I got a direct message from one of the artists as well. So she has two mm. questions. First, is it only workshop based, or we can also sell? Oh, so this one was covered, right? So you were saying that recommend to focus on the workshop, but yep. if you want to, because this is a workshop and experience zone, and there was mm. a separate retail zone, um, mm. but. They want to just, I guess, like have like a small area putting up their products there. I guess that's something that we can explore. But also bear yep. in mind, um, if GQ, you go to that slide showcasing the booth area, it's a two times two, right? I think yep. uh, booth, uh, is it this one? Yeah, I think this one. So it's a two hmm. times two booth space. Um, And as we shared with our community members, if you rent this space for a certain amount of time then this mm. entire area is purely belonging to you so you mm. own that two hour or four hour or six hour depending on how many hours you book and then yep. you can set up on your own but because it's also two times two it's not a very spacious area so it might it, you need to be wise to you know how do you best the space yeah so hopefully that answers uh, the second mm. one is my product after completion requires baking for 45 mm. minutes. So can I ask mm. to the the guests to collect their art after an hour? What's your sure. recommendation? 
Sure. Uh, usually you can do so. So uh, I would say you have to put out the caveat, lah, right? I Meaning you say before even you start the workshop, you can let them know that oh, you know, um, just bring them through like the workshop itself. Uh, you it probably will take about you know fifteen to thirty minutes, and thereafter there will be a if you want to collect the product, then it will be forty five minutes later. Cause there will be some um process that you need to go through, right? And I usually they are more than willing to take uh the wait one, lah, right? I think forty five forty five minutes is a comfortable time. Right. Uh, unless they are rushing off, then probably you can advise them. Um, another mechanics is then you can advise them to either revisit again to collect, or they can collect directly after your uh, you know, after the unbox itself. Go to uh, probably meet up or maybe you can post it, but of, of course charge under them. So there are very various ways to go about. But I will say option one usually is viable because forty five minutes is really a comfortable uh kind of like timing for them. Yes, and I think if we manage to rent the space as a community, then of course, you know, if really people like they have to go be gone by more than 45 minutes while yeah. the, the artists have left, right, and pass on to the mm. next artist, we can still have a zone for a pass like just the next artist to help you hand over mm. the items to your guest as long as you know you have some kind of a ticket or something to verify they are the owner of the products. So that's something mm. the community can help. Uh, there's yep. another question from Shahani. Do we need to mm. be a registered company to conduct the workshops? Don't have to. Um, as much as possible, we would love to, but don't have to. Yeah. So as long as um, I, I think it's more like uh, we okay, it's a platform for you to build your brand, right? A platform to for you to showcase or even to test it. Right, so this is what we always wanted to do for the emerging brands. Right, um, a lot of uh, retailers, a lot of workshop operators, they do not know whether it will succeed or not. Right, so when we first created this business model, right, is we tackle or we we find out that this is the challenge. Right, you need to commit a booth or you need to commit. Let's say a uh, let's say you go to like let's say a, a a a mall itself, you need to rent a space. The commitment usually is two to three years. Right, and it will be like a hefty sum. Right. And this is why usually for us, this is how we come in, right? We want to provide a platform where people or rather like our partners like this, right? Or even business owners who wants to try something, um, they can try at a comfortable uh, you know, like uh, amount and as at the same time, also like uh in terms of the commuter period, it's not too long. So this is this 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 definitely uh like you don't have to register, but best is if you have a brand that you can actually promote. Right. Uh, okay, mm. any more questions from the artists? I mean, this is your best chance to like validate your ideas, right? If you have some ideas, uh, you're mm. not sure whether this will work. You know, maybe GQ can advise from his past mm. event experiences. And also, you know, do you have some questions regarding pricing, regarding the duration yep. and activities that you want to do? Uh, you can yep. use this time to bounce off with him. Yeah. And uh, just want to open to the floor, lah, right? Like, um, generally, you don't really have to just ask me about Artbox. Of, of, of course, today is the main agenda is about Artbox. But of course, we do run other events as well. Like, as shared, you know, like we have Maker's Market. We have like um, those like, you know, free markets. Or even we do host different kind of mega festival that we are more than welcome. Right? I mean, we are, we are welcoming all like, you know, like workshop operators or even partners to join us on board. Because for us, we actively, we always have like emerging brands that are always with us, right? Uh, I would say about 10, 10,000, right? On an active basis, they, ho they have been always like, you know, popping up with us, right? And always there are new emerging brands. People um, from pandemic, you know, like there are new business owners, there are new uh, creative uh, workshop operators that they are coming out with. So I, I think it's really like a, an opportunity beyond Unbox itself. Um, we do have other spaces that we, we could also recommend. Mm. So there's a question from another artist. Uh, how mm. far will Artbox help us to brand individuals or MOP mm. will, branded, will be branded as a community because basically we are mm. putting all of them under our community mm. right but then yep. Yep. you know they are also having their own individual brand so how will box so, be able yeah mm. so uh I, I think this one uh briefly I shared with uh Alice as well right so I was sharing that um you know the branding itself actually should be under um uh, MMOP, right? Because generally, if we have a community of creatives that are coming under them, right? I would say that you guys are, uh, at least side will be more towards the uh, community representative, right? Um, you will bring a pool of like, you know, different creators, right? To actually come up with different type of programmings. And of course, 
through that programming, like let's say for instance, if the workshop is or workshops, uh, maybe let's say every slot is about four hours, right? Let's say every uh, yeah, every uh community members who took over is four hours. Within that four hours, you can you know build your brand, or it could be in a sense where uh basically um let's say Ellie side I think this is open for discussion, right? But but generally you have like uh different community members featured, uh yeah. within the space itself. Yeah, to share about their stories. I think the narrative might be even stronger, right? Because everyone can expect different kind of community members who are joining under or because they go through uh, Mama on Ballot. Yeah, that's right. So I think yep. on the community side, what we always do is for this kind of collective events, we will mm. send our team members to go down um, to mm. also feature the individual artist and also to like even before the events, after we have collected all your interests, we will start... Yep free publicity for each individual artist. Um, mm. So if you have, um, you know, joined our recently Christmas arts uh, market, you will see that as well, you know, photo mm. are taken for individual artists and there are also story sharing about each one of you. So as much as possible, also we are a volunteer run community, but we'll try to help you to feature each of the individual artists. Um, so GQ, if you just allow me to share back my screen. Okay. Yeah. So I think uh, some of you have shared concerns about the price. So uh, mm. as a community, we have explored in a way, you know, how can we help, right, to subsidize the fee and all that. So just now GQ already shared uh, for the official rental fee, excluding GST, it's 1005 for one weekend. So by one weekend, I guess that means, you know, including the lens of that weekend. So from for the first week is from Thursday to Sunday, then 25th to 28th, correct? Then the second weekend is Friday to Sunday at 2 to 4, uh, two, uh, sorry, 2nd to 4th of February. So um, of course, I heard from GQ the weekend uh, traffic is definitely more, is higher. And therefore, uh, what we have worked out is to slice the slots into two hour, two hour slots. So um, for because the, the workshop, I mean, each of the day runs from 12 p.m. to 11 p.m. But of course, I think towards the end of the day, it might be, you know, you might need, the people may not be working in, but there will be people still staying there. So for the last slot, uh, it will be three hours instead of two hours, but the price uh, that you share is still the same, right? Given the extended hours. So every day, whether it's weekday or weekend, there are five slots, 12 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 8, and 8 to 11 p.m. And then, uh, of course, considering the, the higher traffic on the weekends, right, uh, we mark it as uh, double the price, double the share price of the weekday. So um, I think previously we were thinking, you know, to... Uh, we propose to have 50 per slot for weekday and weekend 80 per slot, but now, uh, sorry, 100 per, per slot, but now we are trying to squeeze a little bit even more, right, Um, to be 40 per slot for weekday and 80 per slot for weekend. So this is already further reduced. And as a community and a nonprofit, we will also help to absorb the GST. That means you only pay this amount net, and MOP as a collective will pay on your behalf, right? If we have enough artists joining. And also just now GQ shared there is a 500 deposit. So we will also pay the deposit on behalf of all the participating artists. And you don't need to worry about the administrative factors. So, um, you know, actually with that, right, is uh, hopefully we are able to occupy all the slots. Um, I think for the media and VIP day, uh, GQ also shared, right? They, there will be about 1,000 to 2,000 influencers and KOLs. So although the traffic is not towards the public, I think it will be a good opportunity for you to connect with the medias. Uh, I guess, you know, some some common ones are time out and uh, like, uh, I don't know who else you are, you guys are inviting, maybe GQ can advise. So I, maybe, you know, there's a chance for you while doing the workshop there for them to, uh, to have a conversation with them or, you know, pitch to them to get your brand or your workshop featured. Um, so yeah, GQ, you want to share a bit more on who are the VIP and media guests you are, you are inviting, you are planning to invite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh okay, so usually for S Gags, like usually you know lah, like I think based on last year, they actually invited like Mark Lee, uh King Kong Media, right? Um I, 
quite familiar with probably the local scene, right? And of course, we uh, do have like influencers, like crypto influencers. Say, for instance, like, you know, we have uh, Double Up. Um, we have like, uh, I think the Peace Street, right? There's the new, like, you know, Simon Boy and the group of people. And of course, uh, in terms of the mainstream, there's got like a Time Out. Um, I would say uh, Smart Local, right? All these usually, even Mothership, they all like, they have been also coming down on their own wheel, right? So uh, for the invited, usually for our invitation is where we also blast it out to our own VIPs and guests, which is usually um the, the higher stakeholders, right? Where, um, Say, for instance, like we work with various space owners, uh, such as Capital Land, we have like, you know, uh, Makita's, uh, all these, like, you know, um, all these, I would say partners like, that we usually we work with, uh, even like um, Constana, which is Expo, right? All these, they will actually be helping to also share with their uh, partners and VIPs to, to drop by uh, in our boxes. Huh? So, um, I, I, I don't really have a list yet because for us, is we only, uh, we can only manage, we can only like briefly share, um, I think maybe towards, uh, I would say mid Jan. I would say mid Jan. Yeah, because for us is uh, we are actually looking to do a second press release. Then uh, through that itself, then that's where all the media uh, then will then RSVP right, say that they want to join us right. So um, these are just the usual that you know like we, we usually work with like even for radio FM we have like you no know, ninety seven. Uh, we have like hundred uh three FM and things like that. So. Um, it, it it goes very diverse, lah, right? Like I would say, that they are mainly focusing on uh, a lot on in terms of the um, what our community or what our um target audience usually love to uh stay tuned in, right? So these are the more focused medias that will be coming down. Got it. Thank you so mm. much. So uh, I think we'll leave the artists to have more think about it. Then feel free to mm. ask questions. Uh, you can just leave your question in the chat group and I will consolidate them and ask GQ if I couldn't answer mm. myself. Um, I think, again, this is a good opportunity to um, brand yourself given the very high traffic. And also, you know, it's a good opportunity to connect with more of the creative community as well. So uh, hopefully we will be able to gain enough interest from the artist to join as a collective. And um, by scanning the QR code on this slide, you can go to the sign up form and you will see we have listed down all the slots, all the two hour, two hour slots from 25th Jan to 4th of February. So uh, as of the start, right, you can just tick all the slots that you are available and are open to. And then um, me and Pravina and Babita, who are our volunteers, we will try to, based on what you have submitted, right, by the deadline tomorrow, we will try to consolidate and say, okay, if there's only one artist in, interested in this particular slot, we'll give it to you directly. But if there are more than one artist bidding for one slot, then we'll try to do a ballot uh, and then give it to the artist who is interested. Only if then she give up, then we will pass it on to the next artist. So as much as possible, we'll ensure it's fair and we'll be able to as much as possible catering to all of your interests and wishes. Um, and I think because on GQ side, they really need to know whether we are we are joining, right? We are, we are confirming. So and also they will need to they need more information from us for publicity. Mm. So hopefully if possible you guys can indicate your interest by tomorrow new time so uh 11 59 uh tomorrow and then uh if you need more time to consider i guess the the latest is the end of tomorrow like, then we really need to see do we have enough responses before we proceed so uh mm. Jito, please also you know give us more more time yeah. to, to, for the artist to consider and then mm. uh, we'll let you know by end of tomorrow mm. Mm. Uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh, there's one question from Cheryl. Uh. From yep. today, are we expected to provide our workshop for free for the media groups? No. So uh, usually uh, we how we do things is basically we will request if let's say uh you guys would like or to open up like you know like providing a voucher a redemption like a free workshop redemption to uh medias uh where. Probably we will have like about five hundred units lah, <laughs> so uh, it's kind of expensive. So that's why it's not necessary. Like uh, it's not it's no obligation. Uh, no obligation. But basically, what we do is we do have a media kit mah. We do have a, a goodie bag where uh, if let's say interested partners, interested sponsors, they can actually look into doing the insert right. Where um uh, yeah, which is probably uh what we estimate is about five hundred units of them lah at least because this will be not just the media, but we also be using it for the VIPs and hosts. 
Yeah. To host uh, them. Mm. There's another question. The artist will manage the payments if not wrong. Uh, at the, this one I don't know. Like depending on what's the agreement with Mama and Pellet and the, and you guys. Uh, but yes. Uh, on usual basis is once. Uh, I mean for us it's really just the nominal fee collector, right? Oh. Then you hundred percent will go to you guys. So in terms of the payment, it can be cash. It can be uh you know, like cashless payment. Yeah. So depending on your mechanics. Yes. So mm. usually our conduct is to let the artists handle your own payments. And we have seen, yep. artists, you know, you just need to do a QR code uh, for payment and put it in a stand at your workshop mm. area. So when people come in, they can scan doing that. Um, but I also have a question, uh, GQ. So for mm. workshops, right? Once we have consolidated all the information, we pass it over mm. to you. Will Artbox help to set up some kind of pre-registration? Wow. Or is purely working? Uh usually it's working, but we will promote lah. Means we will share because uh usually for unbox itself, we don't do pre-registration because pretty much it's really ticketed. So mm. when it's ticketed, then it probably it will look uh it, it might be a bit confusing for the community or the visitors lah, because uh it's like uh generally like you have a ticket system, then inside you still need to register something so usually we will just say that we will advise it's free for all but of course everyone advertise through their channel mm. um yeah that, that will be more helpful got it mm. okay, uh any more questions are there any other workshops besides mama on pellets ones yes uh that, that this is the thing so um basically we are we are currently having about eight interests okay uh means that i have po potentially it's is but by right it's full really lah so mm. uh what i could do is basically okay because we as shared right we need to go through a selection right like curation for the workshops so mm. uh generally we need to understand like what it will be happening because for me is i see the strength in the community for here right like if let's say you are to you are you are to do like different kind of workshops at a steep, different hours right mm. uh the, the 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 thing is people really love about you know like if i get to experience different type of workshops there might be a chance right so um so so i will say that like for now uh currently we are putting these eight uh workshop operators under KIV, right? Um, of course, if let's say we add MOP in, right, then this will be about nine. So these nine we will actually curate along among the team, then we will actually shortlist it, which is uh why I share that you know, uh there's a possibility that we will shortlist, then we will let the participants know that whether um are they shortlisted or not. Mm. Yeah. So it really dependent on what kind of workshops um they will be bring in and if there's any similar, yeah, because if it's similar, then we have to deconfigure it. Yes, yes, agree. Mm. Um, okay, any more questions? I'll stop sharing. Yep. But uh, apart from Unbox, I mean, um, I shared, lah, right? Basically, we run different type of events. So I'll send a link here, uh, basically for you guys to check out our website as well, right? So as you know, like apart from Unbox itself, there we are also, we have also like artisanal markets. We also have like new markets that you can actually look at along with others, uh, mega festival that we will be uh, holding in 2024, right? So uh, just let me quickly put in here. If you don't mind, right, Alice? <laughs> no problem, go ahead. I think it's uh, sorry. like for the community to know what are the, you know, the suitable occasions for them. Yes, correct. So yeah, so if you guys uh can check out the link, right? And of course, then you can understand a bit like, you know, uh, what are the kind of like other festivals that we have. And, um you know, I, I'll be more than happy to, uh, be, feel free to reach out to me. Lah, because uh, if you think that like uh, Unbox might be a bit challenging due to the timeline, then, you know, we have more events that we can actually run. Mm, okay. So this is my email. All right. Thank you, Guan Xuan. So uh, hopefully everybody had uh, more insights about Artbox and also in terms of how do you strategize your workshops, right, to gain. So just now GQ has shared some of the past workshop examples, uh, quite unique and also short, uh, short period and also the price is not that high. Uh, mm. Then uh, ho hopefully we are able to join this time in the Artbox. So at least we get exposure of how your ex how your events is like. Um, mm. Yeah, and then- you as, know, a, as a case starter. Yes. Uh, sorry, just mm. one last question from me, right? So for the artists, if let's say they sign in, they got in, um, do yep. these, they don't need to pay the Artbox entrance fee. They will just go in as a workshop. Yeah. 
vendor. Correct. So uh correct. So uh okay, so how we need to okay, because based on uh what you have proposed to the community, right? I understand that you're actually opening up slots. Yeah. So what we usually do is every booth by right, we actually provide two um vendor pass, which will then daily we will change, right? It's a risk tag. So yeah. Um, the idea is by right. Let's say if we're gonna do like this uh slots thing, right? Um, then what you can do is you can pass them the risk tag. Then this risk tag they will need to change with the one that is taking over so that they can come in. So it's like a one to one exchange between mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah, because for my side, I uh, I I don't I will not be able to provide more. Yeah, like this this will be this is what we will be what we have lah. So uh, my suggestion is really just to uh change the risk tag along with other open shop operators. Okay, so two passes per workshop booth at any mm, time. Sure. At any time, correct. Okay, okay. For that day. Mm. Sure. Okay, mm. uh, any more questions from the artists? I realize we've been one hour has easily passed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, GQ, for your time. And thank you, everyone, for you know making on making making time to attend this session. Um feel free to ask more questions. Yeah. He chat after that, and um, mm. so we will be happy to answer or you know, school be back to GQ as well. Um, yeah, so that's I guess the end of the session. We'll uh, if okay, if you have friends, artist friends who you think might be benefiting from this event, then feel free to share with them. Um, I think the more people who are joining, then the, the, the easier we'll be able to go ahead with. All right, so that's all. Uh, thank you, GQ and everyone. Uh, have a thank good you. Day. Okay, bye bye. Thank you guys. See you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.